What if I told you some of the Hollywood child stars you admired growing up were going through hell while the rest of us sat back and enjoyed their entertainment? These are some of the awful ordeals some child actors have gone through and tried to keep secret. Family and career imbalance, Eleanor Fair. Her real name was Eleanor Virginia Crow, and she was born on December 21, 1903. Although she was born into a small and loving family, tragedy struck just one year after her birth. When she lost her brother just as he was about to clock three, she was only one at the time. While it's true that Eleanor couldn't comprehend the pain as much as she should have, there was no denying the huge hit the family took as a result of that loss. Things got so bad the family had to move to forget, so they moved to Seattle. Her father was the manager of a credit card company and her mother was always there for her. They were the perfect family, a perfect example of a functional family despite all. But yet again, fate had other plans for the family because soon after, both of her parents divorced and got separated, and so she had to go live with her mother in France. But things were not all bad, though. It was around this point that Eleanor began to develop an interest and passion to become an entertainer. As a little child, she would perform at the vaudeville, and at age 12, she made her film debut in The End of the Trail. After that, she got her first offer from a film studio, and that was the beginning of stardom, up until her adulthood and demise at the age of 53. Not many people know that she struggled with balancing her many struggles with her family, divorce of her parents, lingering loss of her brother, alongside the demands of fame. It was a lot for her, and it led her to become a raging alcoholic, bankrupt and married twice. Although an amazing and talented star, she held on to these secrets born from her childhood, like many other child stars before and after her, spoiled and bratish Jack Pickford. Now, it won't be out of place to say that a lot of child stars found their way into Hollywood by chance. Most of them never really had to work hard as child stars before they got roles. However, Jack Pickford is the emblem of privilege when it comes to getting a shot at Hollywood. He had an elder sister, Mary Pickford, who was basically America's sweetheart, and he decided that she would accept nothing less than her little brother getting a shot in Hollywood. So she called every favor she could, pulled strings and called people that her fame and stardom could afford her to. At this point, Jack was the youngest of three siblings, and he had a mild interest in acting. But with a sister like his, his mild interest was about to be his career. As a result, she got him multiple roles in multiple films. This must be great, right? Nothing could go wrong. Well, the problem was, based on his background and easy smooth sailing through Hollywood, Jack grew up to be erratic and have blatant disregard for his reputation. Apart from narrowly escaping a court martial, his secret affairs became so widespread they were almost more known than his reputation as an actor. For a while, he struggled to find his footing, but somehow couldn't find a balance between working around his fame and being the privileged kid he grew up as. This impacted his life negatively. Coping Mechanisms Dorothy Davenport She was born into a star-studded family. The Davenport family was well-known in theatrical circles. Her aunt, Fanny Davenport, was considered one of the greatest stage actresses of her time, and her father, Harry Davenport, was a Broadway star before later venturing into movies. Her mother, Alice Davenport, was a respected Broadway and film actress. With a background on the stage, Dorothy was in her early teens when she started playing bit parts in films. By the time she was 17, she was a star at Universal, where she would meet a young actor assistant director gopher scenario writer named Wallace Reed, whom she later married. But the point remains that at such a young age, Dorothy was already so busy and successful. She appeared in a lot of films, read a lot of lines, and was required to perform any time, even as a child. As a result, she struggled a lot and so had to secretly find coping mechanisms that would enable her to show up on screens and entertain us every time without getting stressed or tired. However, in 1923, her husband died from morphine overdose and rumors spread that Dorothy was a morphine addict too. After a while, she made a file called Human Wreckage, which highlighted the dangers of narcotics, but again, it did nothing to curb the rumors. 
Her reliance on morphine, like her husband, according to rumors, stemmed from a childhood trauma to find coping mechanisms. But the truth of this matter, we'll never know, as it's a secret she kept close to her heart. Exploitative parents Jackie Coogan. Coogan was the kid that changed everything. The child star, who made his debut alongside Charlie Chaplin in 1921, the kid leapt to stardom immediately. By the age of 18, he already had 19 movies to his name. He was a double threat, talented and famous, so you'd assume he'd be rich, right? Well, not so much. You see, Jackie's mother and stepfather took all of his $4 million fortune and didn't give him a penny. And worst of all, his mother justified it. When asked if she thought she exploited her son, she said, no promises were ever made to give Jackie anything. Every dollar a kid earns before he is 21 belongs to his parents. However, Coogan wasn't going to take this lying down, so he sued in 1938 but was only awarded $96,000. When his case got media attention, it led to the creation of the California Child Actors Bill, now commonly known as the Coogan Law, which requires that a child actor's employer must ensure at least 15% of his or her earnings is placed in a trust for them and them only. No time to be a child, Madge Evans. Born as Margarita Evans, Madge began her career at just six months old, when she posed for artistes models and eventually was featured in a series of plays. Unlike a lot of other child actors, Madge's success was swift and she became a household name pretty fast. As a matter of fact, her name became so known that a hat company asked for permission to use it as their brand name. Yes. But eventually, Madge got so busy with her career, it was insane. At the age of eight in 1917, Evans appeared in the Broadway production of Peter Ibbotson with John Barrymore, Constance Collier, and Laura Hope Cruz. Some of her best work in plays came in productions of Dread, The Marqua, and The Conquering Male. Her last appearance was in Philip Goes Forth, produced by George Kelly. Evans' mother took her to England and Europe when she was 15. As a child film actress, Evans had quite a prolific career appearing in dozens of films. In 1914, aged five, she appeared with Marguerite Clark in Seven Sisters, a film with a large female ensemble that had been played on stage with Clark's rival Mary Pickford and Lorette Taylor in the cast. In 1915, she was with Robert Warwick in Alias Jimmy Valentine, a still extant film that has seen release on home video. At 14, she was the star of J. Stuart Blackton's rural melodrama on the banks of the Wabash. Before her adult years, she had already appeared in over 30 films and was celebrated for it, but there was a downside. And that was the fact that she barely had a childhood. She barely knew what it was to really be a child. All she did for most of her childhood was to run from film set to film set and work with this producer and that director. The effects of not having a normal childhood told a lot in her career, but she kept it secret for a very long time until her demise in 1981 at 71 years old. Click here to find out some Hollywood murders that were never solved.